Hello and welcome back Crystal to Maiden. Game 3 of this Best of 5 Finals for G League 2015 between CX Gaming and LGD. Thanks so much for joining me. My name's Sindar, a bit of an amateur caster, just doing this for some experience. So, appreciate you joining me. Hope you enjoy the game. We're well into the draft, so let's just check out what's going on here. C-Deck, they picked up a very aggressive lineup here. Undying Spirit Breaker Ember with a Witch Doctor as well. So, I imagine that's a support... Um... Actually, Undying or Spirit Breaker could be run as an offlane. We'll have to see what they Same want to do with that. Remaining. On the other side, LGD, they've gone for the Shadow Fiend again. Did absolute work for them last Five game. Silar remaining. playing that to perfection. And looks like it'll be a Queen of Pain for maybe in the mid lane. And then Crystal Reserve Maiden Winter time. Wyvern as the support duo. So nice defensive abilities from Winter Wyvern against the burst and fight prowess that C-Deck are showing here. Uh, Crystal Maiden, a hero that is very, very vulnerable to... The damage that can come up from C deck, but she's on a team with heroes that can all use the mana region or beautifully in. Well, I'll have to see how it works out. Uh, nice pickup against the Ember Spirit, of course. Just anything to lock him a little bit in place. It's basically all they have other than Winter's Curse from the Winter Wyvern. So I wouldn't be surprised if they pick up an offlaner with some kind of lockdown. Center might not be bad, but he does struggle to get farm in the off lane and against this team especially it could be really trouble uh, troublesome for a centaur good last ban for c deck they ban out the earth shaker which lgd could have run in the off lane it would be a very nice choice against an ember spirit lineup but that'll be denied them what other off laners with lockdown are there in the pool right now Ten seconds oh, not a whole lot I'm trying to think beyond Five centaur clockwork is off the table tusk is off the table Hmm. Reserve time. Uh, I, I can't think of anything that would work. We'll go for, okay, so they will go for the centaur. So, like I said, it's a pretty decent choice here. The only problem is he is going to struggle a little bit to get his levels, and it might be a slow blink dagger timing. Although that being said. MM, or I guess it's going to be Yao on the Centaur. If his team makes some space for him and he can get an early blink, he can do absolute work in these Ten fights. And uh, in the end, I do think it is a good choice. Even if he is a little slow to come Five online, he is remaining. what they need against the Ember. And, well, Reserve will Aggressive time. be able to do well enough on the Ember Spirit to deal with LGD Gaming? Actually, they could run Ember mid, honestly. Ah, uh, no, never mind. LGD are probably going to run the Quap mid, and that's not a good matchup. I was going to say, if he's against Shadow Fiend, that could be pretty nice for him, but... Well, and C-Deck do have a lot of roaming ganking potential with their lanes currently. Witch Doctor probably going to stick around, but... Spirit Breaker, obviously great for moving around the map. Ember, very, very mobile hero. It'll be interesting to see what they want to go for last, as I imagine their mid hero up against the Queen of Pain. What do they need? They need a little more of a. I guess they've got Undying to tank. So maybe a little more AoE team fight. Or maybe they want someone Dragonite. to further lock. Okay, so they've got tank and they've got lockdown in that Dragonite pickup. And uh, it'll be a reprise of the. Mid? No, it won't. Shadow Fiend's going to go mid this time, and Silar will farm the Queen of Pain safe. So we may be against Shiki, Dragonite against Shadow Fiend, and that should go fairly well for maybe, but Shiki should be able to get a decent amount out of this. And Aggressive, well, it'll be interesting. C deck could honestly run uh, an aggressive tri lane here. It's a little tricky against the Quap with that blink away, so if they don't get kills, it could be really challenging for them, but. Honestly, an, an aggressive try here might not be bad, as they do have great heroes for it. And then they'd run... Of course, that, that risks letting Yao get a little too much on the off lane. So, we'll have to see. Ten seconds remaining. Honestly, a, a defensive try lane would be just fine as well. Get Ember a really Five solid early start. Remaining. Get him his farm. And uh, hopefully, Aggressive plays this hero uh, aggressively. <laughs> true to his name. Because I really feel like... Just sitting back and farming in lane is really denying your hero his strength in the early game. We'll see what they want to do with it, though. 
And with that said, we're going to get underway. Game three here, it's one to one. So we're basically straight up to a best of three at this point now between these two teams for the finals of G League 2015. Thanks again for joining me. Sindar, amateur caster, doing this for just a bit of fun. So hope you enjoy the cast. And we'll introduce the teams. On the radiant side, it'll be maybe taking that Shadow Fiend into the mid lane. It'll be MMY going towards the off lane on the Winter Wyvern. Silar there already as well on the Queen of Pain as we got a bit of an early engage here. He could be caught as all five of Seadeck are in the neighborhood. Oh, he will get away, it looks like. And that leaves Zhao Wei supporting on the Crystal Maiden and Yao heading towards the safe lane on the Centaur Warrunner. So that means I think that they suspect an aggro try and are looking to dodge it. We'll see. On the dire side now, we've got Garter running a support on dying. It'll be aggressive, farming up that Ember Spirit in the safe lane. Maybe Shiki taking the Dragon Knight towards the mid. Q supporting on the Witch Doctor, and that leaves XZ going towards the off lane on the Spirit Breaker. It looks like they're not going to be going for aggressive try anyway. This be a bad As they secure the top rune, I'm almost sure, yeah, she will take it. Rushing the bottle, we'll have it very, very shortly. And maybe picks it up in the bot lane, doing the same thing, it looks like. So. Nope. Both sides blocking for their mids as Shiki really wants to have a good start here. Garter may even stick around just to give maybe a bit of a rough time for the first couple of levels. And I don't think that would be a bad choice. Is LGD, they're running a duel off lane. And Zhao is just jungling, so... It's Yao farming the safe lane solo, I guess a Spirit Breaker, while Crystal Maiden jungles and there's an aggressive dual lane. This is a really nice laning decision from LGD. There is less kill potential on the dual lane now, MMY with those nice defensive abilities and Silar with the blink away. Centaur should be able to do absolutely fine against the Spirit Breaker here. Spirit Breaker will get a lot, but Centaur will get even more and... Once he gets that Blink Dagger, he's a force to be reckoned with as top lane. Silar taking a bit of harass. He doesn't have anything skilled yet, so can't go for that Blink if things get dicey. We'll be just fine. And that leaves the mid lane as we've already discussed. So, I do think this setup favors LGD. If Crystal Maiden's uncontested, she's going to get a really nice start. And she doesn't really need to rotate anywhere. Nowhere's going to really need her help. So she's going to be able to do what she wants, get a lot of early XP, be able to get some great support items for her team early. And, well, Sila, taking a bit of harass from Garter, but, again, not really much kill potential. As, uh, he does still have that blink available to skill up if he needs it. Now Garter's the one in trouble. He will be able to sneak away, but very, very low. And nice harass coming out from LGD there. In the mid lane, it's actually... Favoring Shiki for the moment, just by a little bit, so he's had a nice early start. We'll manage to secure the top rune though. And Shiki out of bottle charges. He is gonna be, it looks like, just doing some throwing. It's Jawit will claim the DD in the bottom river. The well, Aggressive is farming very, very nicely. 10 and 12 on him. So he's gonna have a great start. Uh, but Yao's Centaur is really a concern here. And if this was their plan for the lanes in the beginning, then the weaknesses of Centaur as an off lane, as I say that, rotation into the mid lane, nice play from Zhao Wei that helps maybe clean that one up. Uh, moved in, I guess. Did he have a smoke? I don't think so. But beautifully played from them. Nice, important early kill, and now maybe will take control of this mid lane. And Sita can't really spare anyone to help him out. They don't really have someone to rotate except for XZ here on the Spirit Breaker. And if he's missing, it'll be obvious immediately to the Centaur Warrunner. Who is now your last hit leader. So Centaur is going to get that early Blink Dagger, and that's a scary, actually, as now Silar's rotated in the bot lane. They managed to clean up XZ. That being said, and... Well, with that, who cleaned, picked up the last hit? It was Yao, so he's already 400 gold above his tranquils at three minutes in. This is a great start for the Centaur. Now he's going to rotate out Silar's back in the safe lane. Denied. And uh, Winter Wyvern solo off for now. 
So he's going to get some nice experience as well. Just level 2 for now, so giving him the solo lane, wanting him to get his level 6 online as soon as possible is a way of dealing with Dressy. Now Silar blinks away. XE was going for the charge, but won't connect. And Early game, really not going CDEX way here. The uh, potential of this team is really, really terrifying. And Yao, guarding the rune for the Ember Spirit, or, jeez, Shadow Fiend. It'll be a haste, so he can potentially get something done with this against the very immobile Dragon Knight. I feel like a lot rests on Aggressive and how much he's able to get done. He is the last hit leader right now. Uh, it is very, very close between a lot of these heroes. But I'm a little concerned about how their uh, effective their team fight's going to be. They do have some nice damage, but the Winter Wyvern is a really effective counter to this kind of lineup. Well, that said, they do manage to clean up the Dragon Knight in the mid lane. That's another kill going the way of maybe. Well, a kill going the way of maybe. Who now is going to pressure this tower a little bit. Things go from bad to worse for C deck. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Tyler doing some harass onto XC, so they've now rotated two heroes down here, Garter and XZ laning together. Uh, and they're still not really getting a lot. They don't have kill potential on Silar. They don't have enough long lockdown to stop him from breaking away. And, well, now, you being chased by maybe with that haste rune pop, he's in a lot of trouble and should be an easy last raise. Nope, dodges it, and now Shiki's here with the stun. The charge is coming out as well. Oh, he will fall in the end. And uh, maybe will he be able to get away? The charge is coming very rapidly, but maybe oh, MMY is in the area with the cold embrace. He's gonna, there it is. And now maybe in a bit of trouble. Still, aggressive is rotated in. He's got the chains. That'll be enough for a kill, I believe. Yes, they will finally get him, but a lot of low heroes. Now Zhao Aid in trouble. Blink him from Silar. He's gonna, no, he's not gonna finish anyone off actually. And the rotations from C deck are just a little more on point. Ends up being three for nil. And Silar stunned up. Is he in trouble now? He does have blink in three seconds. But I'm just shocked that he blinked in and wasn't able to get a kill off of that. So maybe just a little too aggressive there. Diving the Witch Doctor behind the Tier 1 tower sets it all up. And C deck all of a sudden back in this game completely. That was a very nice engagement for them. It looks like C deck prioritizing use level 6 as that will really enable them to teamfight a lot more effectively. Yao, though, he didn't fall there. 1-0-1 on him, and he's now only about a thousand gold away from his blink dagger at six minutes. So, the rotations that he put out means that he hasn't actually been getting total safe lane free farm, but he doesn't really need it. He he'd be fine with a 12 minute blink dagger, and it looks like he should be able to get that no problem as he'll now solo off against the aggressive Ember Spirit. Not a lot of solo kill potential, but with rotations, Yao could be in a bit of trouble, so he's playing very defensively. Speaking of rotations, C deck, three heroes smoked up, Garter, Q, and XZ looking for a play here. They're rotating towards the mid lane. Shadow Fiend's in the jungle, cleaning up some stacks, and they want him. They want him bad. Will they be able to find him, though? They see the creep pulling out, so they know he's in the area. He's gonna... Take the long way around Unders Tower, suspect something's up. And he's gonna stay hidden for now, it looks like. They see Zhao Wei with this ward. That'll be the consolation kill, it looks like. And they should be able to get him without too much trouble with the charge. Oh, yeah, here it comes. Witch Doctor cast him. Slow him down. And that'll be an easy kill for them. Nice first hit bash from XC. Although, maybe he's rotating in. This is not really where you want to be, maybe. But he does have backup coming. Silar and MOI rotating in. Garter now. <laughs> Throws the tombstone down. Sonic wave over the top instantly disintegrates the undying as Shiki's rotated in as well. Dragon form pop. Breathe fire will force Silar back and maybe will retreat as well. So ends up being a one for two as they do manage to clean up the Winter Wyvern. Looks like that'll be it. No charge on them, maybe. They are gonna. No. You know, this cancel at the last second. Realizing that's a bit too far to go. And five for five now. So. Nice rotation from C deck. They do overstay their welcome a little bit, but managing to find the Winter Wyvern as well, not lose anyone else, despite the rotations from basically the entire LGD lineup. 
working out for them quite well, and now they'll be able to pressure this tier 1 tower with Dragon Form. Still a few seconds available on that. And, well, LGD, they're going to want to defend. Yao swings in. 1,500 gold up on him. He doesn't want to die here. That, that Blink Dagger getting relatively close and rested, posting up with that Flame Guard on. He's up the creep, creep Wave. Has a Remnant back available if he needs it. Well, it looks like they're not going to go for this. A little nervous about LGD's team fight. They will just back and split the map. XZ's already back top. Really musical lanes. No one's staying in a lane this game other than the mids for longer than a couple minutes, it feels. But... Well, that's okay. It's kind of been working out for both teams. They're getting stuff done across the map. Let's take a peek at the gold, honestly. LGD had managed to accrue a nice win, but after that little series of skirmishes, they uh, have pulled it back on the side of C-Deck. Now only about a 500 gold lead. I mean, it's 10 minutes in, so eh, not really a big deal at all, but dead even now, basically. 5-5 uh, to five for kill score. Gold is basically negligible, and well, the question is, who does this favor? I think C-Deck have a slightly earlier timing with the Dragon Knight and the Undying. They want to be getting a little more done early. And, well, they've got a four-man smoke, so maybe they'll be able to do so. Are they going to go for a kill, though, or are they going to go for the Roche? I don't think they can do Roche. No, definitely not. They don't even have a medallion. They're rotating through. They want the mid lane again. Worked out for them last time. Let's see if they can get another kill here. Maybe would be a great choice. Charge coming out on him. Triple remnant forward. Very aggressive from aggressive, and maybe will instantly fall. Doesn't have time to do anything. Tombstone dropped under range of the tower. That's a little unfortunate, but... Well, with the Ember in the, or with the Shadow Fiend in the grave, they'll be able to pressure this tower. No problem at all. And Aggressive picks up a regen. Very, very nice for him. It's... They'll just retreat and farm out the lane, trusting that the rest of his team can pressure this tower without him. MMI doing what he can to hold them back, but it's not going to be enough. They do have an urn, so they got some decent sustain. And... Shadow Fiend's back in five, though. And it looks like LGD want to fight. They're TPing heroes in. And seeing that, C-Deck just back. They don't finish the tower, but they do get a quite low, and they'll be reasonably content with that. 5-6, to six, now your score. So, C-Deck, with the pick off onto the Shadow Fiend, he is the network leader, so nice pick for them. And it'll just go back to being a bit of a slow game now. Both teams deciding to sit back a little bit. Though, LGD, they've actually smoked up. They're going to pressure the tower with maybe, and meanwhile have the rest of the heroes sit behind the tower, undercover smoke, try and pick off someone coming in. Nice aggressive ward place. But it looks like CDX suspects something up. They're not going to... Oh, they do have a TP in now. The tower, will it be denied? Actually, the jump comes out onto the Witch Doctor in the backside. And now, center ultimate to retreat. Are they going to be able to catch him when they get Yao? He'll be the consequence. He's down for 30 seconds. Actually, that's a buyback on the Witch Doctor. Really good choice for them, I think, because he can now help his team pressure this tower. And early on, buyback on the Wish Doctor is pretty meaningless, so... Are they going to go for it? They should. With no Centaur. Uh, he does have his Blink Dagger, though. Got it before he died. So, his death isn't too much of a loss. It's just that it gives C-Deck a bit of a space to... Turn down this tower. Sonic way over the top. Hits on three. And Siler now blinking in. Well, a lot of heroes low, but none dead yet. As XC is going to be the first to fall. No, he gets the charge away. Q will be the sacrifice as he does go down. And they still didn't claim this tower. 28 HP on it. Very unfortunate. But at least they only lose one. A little unfortunate that he was the one who brought back. He's in the grave for a decent amount of time, actually. He's a support who's level 5. So not in the grave for that long, after all, even with a buyback. Jiki now, Dragon Form, still got about half of it left. And it looks like LGD, they're going to pressure this tower. They've got Yao standing behind, ready for the jump in with that Blink Dagger. And will C-Deck fall for it again? Carter is in the area. Is he being scouted though? Charge coming out, who's it onto? It looks like Silar. Blink onto Shiki though. Jump in from Silar. They're going to clean up the Dragonite very, very quickly. And C-Deck, Frostbit in place. There's the Centaur ultimate yet again. And... Crystal Maiden's doing so much damage with her ultimate. She does end up falling. And now Wish Doctor ult onto maybe. This is going to be good for them. But he will clean up one with his Explosion Requiem. And Yao now in trouble. 
Q, very, very low, surviving for now. No, MMY will clean up with the last hit. Now Garter, he's the one in trouble. Siler will be able to get away. No, Searing Chains combined with the Decay from Garter will clean it up. So it ends up being a 3-for-3. Three three. Yao got very low, didn't end up falling. So, decent hold from C-Deck, but it does cost them a lot. And that ends up actually favoring C-Deck a little bit. But 800 gold at this point, not really a huge deal, so... But the concern is really how far ahead of everyone the Shadow Fiend is. He's 6,000 gold. Good 1,300, actually 1,600 ahead of the Ember Spirit, who's the highest net worth on C Deck's side. He has gone for some very uh, early fight items. He's got the Poor Man Shield, the Phase, as well as a Bracer. We'll have to see if he goes for the full completed drum or if he wants to go for the Battle Fury. It might not be a Battle Fury game, honestly. It feels like it might come online a little too late. But what else is he really going to go for? He go for... Uh, no, it really should be that. Maybe pressuring this top tower. At the same time, the bottom tower actually gets denied by the Crystal Maiden in the face of four heroes who are smoked up. They're going to be actually relatively pleased with that. They wouldn't have wanted to smoke for just a Crystal Maiden. And Silar's the bigger prize, although also harder to lock down. Will he be able to get away here? Rotate through. Here comes the charge. Oh, he was TPing out. Very unfortunate timing for him. Is now he is locked in place. Is there enough? No, he blinks into the trees. They do know where he is, though. Remnant forward. Aggressive will clean it up. And now they'll be able to pressure this tower. But C-Deck or LGD did manage to claim the top tier 1, and now they're pressuring tier 2. So... They may be able to claim this tier 1 C deck, but it's going to come at the cost. With the Queen of Pain pick up, though, they'll be relatively happy with that. And they may be able to get back and defend. Yeah, they fortify their tower. TPs can come out now. If they've got any, yeah. Ready to defend them. Well, LGD seeing that will just be forced to back off. It ends up being another exchange that nicely favors C deck, I believe. Taking that tower, getting the pick on the Queen of Pain. We're now looking, actually, it's about a 2,000 gold lead for uh, LGD. As, actually, no, no, it updates. So 1,500 gold. C-Deck really holding it well, together well. It felt like a couple times LGD were going to start to get out of control. But C-Deck have been holding their ground, not giving away too much here. The concern is that LGD's team doesn't really fall off anytime soon. And C-Deck does a little bit. I mean, Undying... Once you're past about 30 minutes, he's not really doing all that much in the team fights, and he is level 8, so he's doing okay as far as XP goes. He's got a Glimmer Cape online, maybe posting up, attacking this tier 2. Is there a retaliation C deck? They want it. Aggressive on the backside, undercover in this. This could be really nice for him as Shiki pops the dragon for him. Here we go. Chains onto MMY. He's going to be the target number one. Going to fall immediately. MMY pops the Requiem. Sonic Wave over the top as well. Crystal Maiden doing work, but she's stunned up. Going to be caught out here. Q is already down on the side of C deck, but maybe now in trouble. And Yao could fall as well. He will. This could be a team wipe. Silar, he gets the blink away. Is there any follow up? There are no uh, Ember Spirit. Uh, Oh, but he gets the chains combo. That's Silar. No, he blinks away. Urn is on him. Will he tick down here? It's going to be close. He will fall. That's a team wipe for C deck. And that's actually... Okay, that only picked up the last kill. I was going to say, it's got to be more than a 600 gold swing. But C deck lose some heroes, but now completely back to even as far as net worth goes. And they hold their tower as well. So gets a little low, but very, very nice from them. And... Zember Spirit starting to do some real work here. He's now going for that Battle Fury. Has Perseverance Gold if he wants it. And yeah. It's going to be a nice, decently timed uh, Battle Fury for him. If he continues to do... He's 4-0-10, actually. So he's had almost 100% kill involvement. And not died yet against this lineup. That's actually pretty darn impressive for him. Especially considering he hasn't really been using his remnants defensively. There's been so many triple remnants in. Even using it to secure the kill on MMY that last fight to make sure that no Cold Embrace or Winter's Curse could come out. And really good choice for them, I think, to focus MMY in the start of the fight. Realizing that their 
Massive damage. Doesn't mean much if they can't actually take anyone down. Now, initiation forward on to Shiki. Yao gets the stun off, but instantly Glimmer caved, and now it's Yao who might be in a bit of trouble. Stunned. He's being slowed by the tombstone. Will he be able to get another blink away here? He shouldn't. Oh, but C-Deck aren't going to engage. They're a little nervous. They have uh, XC in the top lane and Ember in the bot, so they didn't really want to go for that, but that was uh, center ultimate popped and a blink forward, and they don't actually clean anyone up, so even though C-Deck don't get any follow-up kills, at least they don't lose anyone. Now LGD going their full five-man group up yet again. They want this tier 2 tower. They should be able to claim it without too much difficulty. Do they press further here, or do they maybe just retreat for Roche? Looks like they're going to rotate towards the top lane, maybe? No, nope, just defeat, retreat, and defend their tower here. It's aggressive is pushing that in fairly aggressively. Farming up the enemy jungle. Probably, honestly, the safest place for him to be right now, so... Nice positioning from him, and the rest of his team fully capable of fighting without him. As they now smoke up as four. Lines being drawn on the map, but they may look to bait with aggressive. And will they be able to find anyone here? Do they have vision? They do, of course. This this dire ward is spotting all their movement out. And LGD smoke here could be really unfortunate for them. Doesn't look like that's the play. They see that CDEX all off the map, so they're playing very defensively. Yao out in front, ready to detect the jump in, but they are moving over this ward, which they don't know about. There is only one hero in the area for CDEX, though. The rest have all spread out across the map. Aggressive farming the top lane. He does have a remnant down in the backside. That's going to last for 45 more seconds, so can definitely jump onto the backside here once the fight starts. So it looks like LGD, they want to pressure this tower. This could be a huge fight. If CDEX can hold them off now, they're in command of this game. But if LGD wipe them, they have the heroes to do absolute work on the objectives for C-Deck. Fortify their tier 1. Charge comes out on a maybe. This is going to be the fight. Dragon form pop from Shiki. Now maybe being pushed back. So Sonic Wave only clips on 2. Not the biggest of deals. XE in, but he's going to fall into the Spirit Bomb. And now Yao, cold and braced up. He's absolutely fine. Ultimate comes up from him. They want to retreat as Ember Spirit is now in the fray. They'll be able to clean up Yao. But I'm not sure they'll get a whole lot more. Maybe being slowed down a little bit. He's already used the mech and the BKB. He's getting caught out. Winter's Embrace, though, onto Garter. Very nice from him. And Witch Doctor will fall. Glimmer Cape onto Garter. And maybe should be in trouble here. And will they be able to clean up Slyther? Actually, Cold Embrace yet again. MMY doing so much work this fight. Shiki very low. Could fall to Slyther here. He's just waiting to come back in. He will actually tick down to the cold... Um, the tick damage from Crystal Maiden. MMY will be the sacrifice here. It goes for TP out, but isn't going to be able to make it. And that's at a mega kill from Aggressive, who's now 5-0 and 13, and has that Battle Fury coming out on the Courier. So, ends up being a 4 for 2, and definitely a fight favoring C-Deck, even though they actually they defend their tower as well. So, very, very nice fight for them. And Well, with that, Shadow Fiend's still out on top as far as net worth goes, but C-Deck are in the lead for only the second time this game is it's only put a 500 gold lead though so really not much this game is just very very close and it feels like in the next 10 minutes or so it's really going to come down to team fight execution but that being said c deck has really been pulling out all the stops the last couple fights so maybe they can take the edge here and continue to build up their lead aggressive is officially in ember spirit scary time and LGD have to be a little concerned by how unchecked he's been so far. The, the amount of kill involvement he's got, combined with not dying at all, is a bit of a concern, and now that he's got that Battle Fury online, he's going to accelerate and can become a very serious threat to him. As Silar being charged up, will he be able to take him out? It should be able to as the chains finish it off. That's a nice kill for Aggressive. Unstoppable for him. And... With that, they may be able to pressure this tower. They do have four heroes in the area. At the same time, maybe Solo kills the tier one tower. So it is going to be a trade, but with the co-op kill, c -Deck should be just fine with that. And especially the fact that Aggressive picks it up. He's just getting to a bit of a scary place. It looks like they're not going to commit. A little worried about the defensive play from LGD. No, they'll go back in. So Aggressive cleans that up, gets the last hit. He's up to 1,300 gold after finishing his Battle Fury literally two minutes ago. So, very nice farm on him. And 
Finally, LGD is rotated in, but uh, C-Deck playing very, very cautiously here. Not looking to go for any more engagements. They get what they came for. They'll back out, and I imagine Aggressive will be going for a Mantis style next, and if so, he's already basically got Yasha money. Shiki going for a DKB, it looks like, and that's a really good choice, I believe, especially against the Centaur and the Crystal Maiden. A lot of really annoying lockdown for the Dragonite, who isn't the most mobile of heroes and wants to be able to get on his targets, so good choice for him. That'll really help in the next team fight with that 10 second charge. XC is very far himself. He's got a Midas, and actually, that being said, charge out. The chains have caught MMY and Yao, and Wish Doctor Hulk over the top. Yao goes for the try to escape, but he's not going to make it as he gets Nether Strike from XC. And now, Xiao Wei in trouble, gets caught by the chains. He goes for the TP out, but that's not going to happen. Quick 3 for 0 from C-Deck, and well, they are in it to win it here. They've really taken over the game the last 10 minutes, and now they're going to be able to pressure this tier 2. And Aggressi, this Ember Spirit has been the pick of the game for C Deck, doing so much work for them. Drum charges to pop, they'll clear up this tower as soon as the, the uh, cliff is, goes down. And I don't think they'll look to pressure high ground, but they might want to retreat and go for Roche at this point. Or they're gonna stick around? No. They'll just back off. So maybe doing what he can, but. The rest of his team is starting to fall a little behind him. That's the concern for LGD is no matter how far the Shadow Fiend is, if all his supports are dead, which Aggressive can do very, very quickly, I mean, MMY and Crystal Maiden are both incredibly vulnerable to Aggressive. We can get on the back line so easily, get that Searing Chains off, and with XC as well, uh, that's a really nice duo. And now, going for the TP out, worried about maybe. He won't be able to finish him off, doesn't have the right click. He's going for a butterfly. So, decent choice. But uh, Ember Spirit can easily pick up uh, an MKB. He's a great carrier for that item. And he's got 3,700 gold, so he can go for basically whatever he wants. As Ember's actually Spirit Breaker now picks up a BKB. C Deck are getting some scary items now. As far as LGD goes, they don't have a whole lot. They've got. The Agon of Scepter on Silar, which has been a little underwhelming so far this game. And maybe with the Blink Dagger, or not Blink Dagger, with the uh, BKB mech, he's not got a lot of right click at all. Jawait has the Glimmer Cape, so that's nice for him, but not really matching the level of item progression that's coming out from C Deck right now. Just a little concerning, because C Deck has been winning these fights without these big items, and now they're starting to get them. Uh, you feel like they're just going to keep up with that trend. Although, of course, LGD, very, very skilled team. They do still have the potential to outplay C Deck in these fights. It isn't really that much of a lead yet. 26 minutes in, just over a 4,000 gold lead. Really not saying a whole lot. So, Aggressive and the rest of C Deck aren't in a completely comfortable place just yet, but they're starting to get there. And now 4,500 gold on the Ember Spirit. God, really curious now, actually, as to what he's going to go for next. He's going to go for the Daedalus, so very, very straightforward traditional build. Going pure damage, and it's going to be very effective. Uh, Daedalus Sleight of Hand, or Sleight of Fist, against Crystal Maiden and M MMY is... Well, this is not what you want to see as a support on LGD's side. That's just such an incredibly difficult thing to fight into. Is maybe getting caught up by the charge. Wish Dr. Ult as well. He's going to fall almost instantly... That's another easy pickup for C deck, and they should be able to go right for the Roche Pit now if they want, with maybe down 60 seconds on the deck for him. He does have buyback, but really doesn't want to blow it here. And they should be able to clean up this Roche, and with that, may even be able to pressure high ground with it. They don't have to go right away. They can wait, farm up a little more, get maybe one or two more items, but... Okay, Cressy, he's picked up something. What is it? Oh, right, he already... I already saw the I already saw the chrysalis, so that'll be coming out next fight as well, potentially for the high ground push. And with an Aegis online, well, he can play just as aggressively as he wants, which is really the ideal position for an Ember Spirit. So either getting charged, should be able to get the blink away, no problem. Just driving him out of the jungle, not letting him farm up as he'd like. And Q now, he's got the medallion online, could be going 
or a Solar Crest, I think it'd be a really good choice this game. Because that would be just a fantastic item to throw in the Ember, make him even stronger. Darter's gone for Gem as well as the Mech, so they're looking to really hold LGD inside their own base, not let them get anything on the map. And given the current game state, they are in the lead, but they can lose it fairly easily uh, with just one or two lost team fights. So controlling the map, not letting LGD farm, seems like a really good game plan from C deck. And that gem pickup will come in really handy for that. Shadowfiend getting a little closer to that PKB, but I feel like that item alone isn't going to be enough if the rest of his team is too far behind. So let's take a peek at what they're going for. Silar. Still only 2k gold on top of the Axe after 30 minutes in. Really not ideal. He's died four times. And, well, Shadow Blade up on Dragon Knight, and it looks like, actually, Spirit Breaker's going for that as well, so. Really looking to continue with the pickoffs, catch LGD out. I mean, you saw that last game, right, with LGD strategy. They got one or two pickoffs, and then they could easily play the base. As Xiaowei getting jumped on, here he is being charged. Glimmer capes up, but that doesn't protect him because they see exactly where he is. Will the charge get cancelled from XZ? No, it will not. He pops the BKB. Xiaowei's already down. Sonic Wave comes out over the top, and Winter Scourge doing a lot of damage on XZ, but it's not enough. Crystal Maiden and Yao are both down. Spirit Breaker will fall, but maybe being herded back towards as well. Will the brace on him for now, but maybe will fall. So will MMY and aggressive going back under the tier fours they want this lane of racks he's got the ages remember so he doesn't have a care in the world full daedalus out for him now and they're fighting under the tombstone so mmy could be in trouble here he is gonna go down to the stun from shiki that's a did he buy back for that no he just respawned but they are in a difficult position now with that tower falling and still, the Shadow Fiend's in the grave for another 35 seconds. Sonic Wave over the top, but again, just not really doing anything. These heroes are all just fine. The sustain from Q and Garter is really working out for them well this game. And aggressive, just look at him, running forward. This guy was born to play this style. And, uh, he's going to be able to get the retreat out now. Uh, beautifully played from C deck. Really taking advantage of those pickoff abilities and... All they need is one or two, and they can take out high ground. It's eerily similar to LGD's victory over them last game. Basically a very similar strategy, where you find one or two kills with these very aggressive heroes, and then there's nothing they can do to stop you from pressuring the racks. And Well, that uh, Aegis is still up. He hasn't even had to use it yet, so... Another 4,300 gold on him after finishing the Daedalus. He is now very, very far ahead. 17,000 gold up on him compared to the 13,000 of... The Shadow Fiend, who still doesn't have an offensive item. He's got 3,200 gold up yet, but that's still not enough for the Butterfly. And he's probably going to want to save for buyback. So he's not going to want to finish that item just yet. As Shadow Blade charged from XZ. They want Silo. Will they be able to find it? MMY is in the neighborhood with his defensive abilities. Will them brace up on a Silo. He should be just fine. And now they will find MMY as a sacrifice. Though actually, Sonic Wave over the top, but it's not going to be enough. As Yao gets caught out now, he ultimates to try and get away will he be able to do so no the sleight of fist is there that's a got beyond godlike streak for aggressive and gg is called that'll be the end of the game cdac take it in dominant fashion after how hard they were crushed last game i was a little worried for them but showing that they're a very resilient team taking it back here in game three and now they only need one more to take this entire series against lgd who don't forget or the team who was directly invited to TI. C deck only in as a wild card, so voting very well for C deck's chances in the international coming up in just a month. So, great game three. We'll have to see what both teams can put out for game four. LGD on match point. They've got to really pull out all the stops. Let's see if they can do it. Guys, Sindar, thank you so much for watching. I'll have the next one coming up for you in just a moment. Don't go anywhere.